Hey, hey, what's up, everyone? It's your girl, Sherelle. I'm the host of Let's Talk the Show, and this ain't a podcast. I want to thank y'all for tuning in with me this Tuesday like you do every Tuesday. I got a great show in store for you. But before I go any further, make sure you click that button in your lower right corner and share this line with three friends you think will love the conversation. I'm going to go ahead and do that before I get into what I'm grateful for today, you guys. So let's get into it. You guys, we have a special guest tonight. I'm super excited. Um... Just like a real quick backstory. Like I got tonight's, like I found tonight's guest, you guys, from a freaking Facebook section. I wish you guys knew how often I found people there. It's insanity. But I'm so excited to have y'all tonight. Make sure you guys drop something in the comment section that you're grateful for. Drop something in the comment section you're grateful for. I'll go ahead and, and kick it off. Tonight, I am grateful. Um, tonight, I would like to say that I'm grateful for, honestly, keep a long story short, I really am just grateful to have the patience and the resilience to still show up no matter how tired I am. Um, and to not just want to show up, but to show up in the best possible version. Like, not just like, it's one thing to come to an event or do something and be sitting there tired, just looking there just to say you show up. It's another thing to come in and put genuine effort, per, you know, genuinely prepare for something, no matter how tired you are. Like, this is a lot of things I'm juggling, and I really want to execute them at the, like, highest level. So, that includes tonight's show. So, yeah. So, let's get into it. First things first, y'all, while we let, while we wait for our special guest, let me get her in here. Let me see. Give me one second. Okay. Okay, so while we wait for our special guest to join, let me see. Hold on one second, you guys. Okay, so yeah. While we wait for our special guest to join, let's get right into it about this nigga Diddy. Okay, so have y'all seen CNN leak the video of Diddy assaulting Cassie in a hotel about eight years ago 2016 he assaulted her and it went all over i want to say that this is the perfect opportunity for y'all to start unfriending people over the foolishness um over the foolish comments they make about this like i saw somebody especially women it'd be so weird and i mean i'm gonna say men too actually but sometimes it's just a little i'd be a little taken back when the women make comments some girl made a post saying um he ain't even hit her that hard or, no, he didn't even hear her. He barely touched her. And this is like, y'all be normalizing being abusive and being toxic and being crazy so much. It doesn't make any sense. And y'all wonder why these kids so unstable, so unhinged. And it's just like, I don't know. Like, it just be disgusting. I unfriended a couple people. I'm not going to lie. I unfriended a couple guys because of the comments that they made about this Diddy situation. Um, it's just nothing to play with. And it's just really funny because I know a lot of times... These people that end up in, um, a lot of times these people make posts just to troll, but it's just unacceptable. And I'm not even trying to be funny. Like a lot of times, like I saw somebody made a post when I know their mama was in an abusive relationship. I'm not even trying to be funny. I saw somebody make a funny post about Diddy beating Cassie when I know their mama was getting beat up. And it's just like, y'all don't have a care in the world. Y'all don't have a care in the world. And for that, I just cannot be your friend on Facebook. You guys to get the fuck out of there. So, yeah. Drop your thoughts in your thoughts in the comment section about Diddy. I couldn't even speak for a second. But our special guest is here, you guys. I'm so excited. So, we're going to get her on and we're going to get started. And I do not speak here for a second. Okay. So, let's see. Y'all know how Instagram is with me. Be hating. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm good. That's good. Let me see if I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I just had to put my headphones in. I was charging up a little bit. Now I got to look in the mirror see what y'all looking at. Okay. Hey. Yeah, as you can see, this weather is not, you know, this, people don't tell you natural girls, we be going through it, man. Because sometimes the weather be like raggedy and. Yep. <laughs> sometimes our hair don't dry. Sometimes our hair don't dry and then it's just, it's just a mess. Because when your hair don't dry all the way, Ooh, it ruins the hair. 
Ooh. Someone says, look at that lovely right. hair. Listen, we okay. at home. We at, I'm, at my, I'm at my daddy house. This is what it is, y'all. Y'all going to have to love me for my interview today. And it don't matter. <laughs> and, we, and we do. And we do. Let's get into it. I'm so excited to have you tonight. Hello. Thanks so much. I appreciate you inviting me. This is going to be fun. We're going to have fun. Even though I don't have any eye makeup on, we're going to have fun. It don't matter. We definitely <laughs> have a vibe. Okay, so we have to kick the show off. Um, I don't know why so much. <laughs> We have to kick off every show with something that you're grateful for. So you got to give us something that you are grateful for. I got one. Wait a minute. <laughs> I got one. I have a lot. I'm grateful for so much. I love it. Um, I'm grateful for my community of friends mm. today. Mm. Um, we help each other professionally and we're also there for each other personally and we lift each other up. And I made a joke on Facebook about needing a hundred dollars. And my friend was like, um, send me your cash app. And then he said, no, I'm just playing. Then he hit me back. It was like, no, nah, for real, if you need me. Cause I was like, I'm just playing. And he was like, oh no, nah, for real, if you need me. And I mean, like, I'm not going to ask him for money, but at the same time, it's just nice to know that he would give it to me. So I'm just grateful for the relationships uh, that I have that are valuable. I love that. Well, your friend wants to be a hundred. I take it. She might not I mean, you know, it's rules about taking money from married men, even when they oh. well intended. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, nah, your wife, <laughs> ask your wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, he's a, he's a friend. He's a friend. So I know he, I know he just cared. You know, I know he just was like, I'm playing with you, but if you, you know, if you really need it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. <laughs> point. I forgot. You gotta add that little disclaimer in there. <laughs> we can't hug married men. Yeah. We can't DM them after eight o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? We can't we can't don't ask up a little Don't laugh too loud and no joke. Don't. Actually, you need to stay 10 feet away from him, actually. So we can't split feet. We can't eat the fries off my No, sorry, you cannot have my no. fries. Okay, because no. you're married man. Exactly. I'll fix before we know it. Somehow we on a Facebook post uh, and mm. some shit that wasn't even exposable. I don't know. Exactly. It's not worth it playing that game. I don't play with married men. Stay away from me. Please, please stay away from me. Actually. I'm telling your wife because I'm not getting caught and I'm going to tell on you. So if you didn't tell her, I'm going to tell her. No, I'm not in trouble. Exactly. I agree. The comments are blowing up. Somebody said, see, this is why men don't want to be married. That oh, my God. Is. Good boy. Relax. Oh hey, God. Smuggy. Hey, cousin. Hey, Shannon, lady. My cousin's on here. Hey. I see it. <laughs> Somebody said, gotta love the community we are a part of. Okay. So I'm super excited to have you because. I've, I've always been making these comments on Facebook about wanting certain things on Tubi, and I never see them. Like, I haven't yet to see a rom-com, but shout out to Ronnie, because I think he's making a romantic movie. I don't think it's a rom-com, but it's a romantic. And then I said something about a comedy special, and then that's how I found you. You said, that, <laughs> you said that you are making a comedy special, and it has been cleared to go on Tubi. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Heather? Um. Yeah, sure. So... Like I said, my friends. So this is where I'm at in my career, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not rich or famous, but I have a lot of rich and famous friends. Okay. okay? <laughs> so okay. that's kind of where I'm at in my career. So when they call me and they have deals on the table, well, they're legit deals. So I had a friend and he uh, he had an idea and we fleshed it out about, I want to say September, October of last year. And we wrote it and it got it got greenlit and we argued a lot when we wrote it it was crazy because we had never worked together like that yeah and we have very different processes okay. and he's uh he's a lot more meticulous and an anal if that's the right word yeah. no disrespect friend if you watch it <laughs> but he's a little more anything and everything has to be in place and i'm more like write the story <laughs> so, right um he kind of let me take the lead on it and do it my way and I think the end result was great. He showed it to a couple of people. He got some people interested in it. And uh, he got the green light on it. So I don't know when it begins production. And more importantly, I'm not in charge of casting. So don't nobody ask me. Um, the writer has no say. Like the writer literally delivers the script and walks away. But um, since this is a someone I have a relationship with outside of work, I know I'm going to know when things are happening. So obviously, if I have some information, I'll share it. But I don't know if they're going to film it in L.A. I don't know if they're going to film it in Atlanta. Detroit is definitely one of the top, one of the cities that they're considering. Ooh, ooh, because right now Detroit that. is doing really well. And um, the infrastructure for Detroit film is, is so strong already. 
So it's a yeah. good possibility it could end up getting shot in Detroit. It's much more affordable to shoot it in Detroit too. LA would be $20 million. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They could do it in Detroit for much less. So it's a good opportunity. Um, it will be a good look to get the movie there. Absolutely. Because it is going to have um, already one A-list actor attached to it. So it'll be um, it'll be nice. Yeah, so it is definitely in the rom-com category. Yeah. Um, funny, romantic, no dope boys, no stripper poles. No. I, no, this is sad, but I was so fucking tired of that i yeah. wanted something that was like i just i think that to be i want to ask you about that too to be has literally blown up due to black indie filmmakers like any black indie filmmakers have really made to be just what it is which has brought so much um attention to it and, and it's opening so many doors and it's like can we get another style i'm so tired of the dope boys i am tired of okay. the strippers hey I, i'm tired no okay uh, yes and no I'm yes tired. and no. I think I think a lot of people who never knew Tubi existed. So basically, a few years ago, all your major networks got their got a streaming app. Yeah. So Fox had Tubi, uh, NBC had Peacock, okay. ABC. I mean, I CBS had I Paramount Plus. Okay. ABC has Disney. Okay, okay, they all have a stream Disney Plus. Yeah. They all have a, so Fox, Tubi was always Fox. That's why if you look at the rerun, they just weren't investing in it yet. Yeah. So because they needed content, it was a new platform, they needed content, they opened up to the what we call the mitigators, which is like the middleman, like Homestead is a mitigator, um, Indie okay. Rights is a mitigator. So what the little titling you see at the beginning of the independent film, that's who actually has the relationship with Tubi to get the film on. So the independent filmmakers are more or less splitting the profits with these mitigators, and the okay. mitigators have the relationship. Hey, and they were just flooding all this Detroit content mm -hmm. because Detroit is hustle town and you tell us to do something, we're going to do it 20 times 10. So, are we making movies? All right, let's make movies. We jumped right into it. Oh and so we, we ended up having more content. Atlanta has a ton of content on there. Chicago has yeah. content, but Detroit just has the yeah. most. And I yeah. think, um, I hate to say this. I don't know how to say this the right way. I think because uh, Detroiters are just better looking. Um, we just really deliver some attractive people. Like our movies were beautiful. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it was like, these are some good looking people. Yeah, and people like looking at good-looking people, who don't? or whatever. So I think that had a lot to do with it too. I mean, Crystal Dow is gorgeous. Who doesn't want to look <laughs> at her? You know what I'm saying? So of course we're gonna look at her. She's beautiful. We are. So um, that created like a little fan base for certain filmmakers, like Moolah, um, BZ, um, different uh, LB author LB, um, and then it's like from there, then it began to blossom. But Tubi was gonna be all right. You think so? Because it was a fight. I know so. Because I know what their plans were. They're oh, about okay. to start implementing their plans right now. They, if you notice, they rebranded the colors. They yeah. rebranded the logo. So that. what's about to happen now is they're about to do what colonizers do. Hey, thanks, Negroes. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh. Thank bye -bye. you. And we're about to, yeah. And you yeah. know what's fun? It's so funny you said that because I, I had seen Tubi just like I know about um All Black. All Black was a thing. Mm -hmm. a app. I don't even know if it's still All I Black. It's owned by Amazon. Okay. That's an Amazon channel. That's See, what I'm saying. All these, these, all these are all connected to billionaires. <laughs> yeah, so I know about yeah. all black right at the pandemic. And I was like on there and I was telling, kind of like telling people, they're like, nobody watching that. And I kind of was on Tubi a little bit and they were like, nobody watching that. And then something happened and Tubi, boom. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh my God, it's nothing. But like, I knew there were other, um, other cities in there, but nothing was booming like Detroit. And then I recently saw, like you said, the yeah. rebrand and I said, not built on the back of niggas and y'all about to switch the fuck up. Oh my God. Yeah, they were going, that was, it was inevitable. It I, was inevitable. So all they're going to do now is they're going to copy the model. And they're going to give those, they're going to, they're giving deals to established actors. The industry wants people they can control. Yeah. They can't control 47 different independent producers. They can control, yeah. you know, Issa Rae or whatever, because Issa Rae got, got a deal. It's like a lot of people getting deals. Think, okay. Or whatever. Yeah, that public so, I feel like there was some I thought of I talk about. I saw something online. Okay, so I, I, I was, that's okay. why I said it, because I saw it online. Yeah. I didn't even, I don't even remember reading it. I'm not surprised, though. She's a hot commodity yeah. in Hollywood right now for black okay. creatives. Definitely. So they're going to do, they're going to, if you look at Hulu did, because uh, Hulu is another ABC yeah. streaming app. Okay. Um, they're going to um, do the black Twitter thing. It, that's, those are like who Hollywood looks to when they're looking for creativity from brown people. Yeah. That's the, those are their those are the people that they that they go to. Those people all I guarantee you all have some kind of development yeah. deal, or at the very least they can have a conversation when they get ideas. Absolutely. So 
if if we're lucky as a city, we can continue. We can just find other apps to you know transition to. But hopefully somebody will get plucked out and they'll get developed at the Hollywood industry level, which will be the ultimate win. Like if somebody can get signed yeah. to something major from that, but some of them are going to fall by the wayside. It is going to become a quality thing. Yeah. So some of these people that's putting up the BS, they're going to fall by the wayside yeah. because if I could call Lorenz Tate and give him the same budget, then I'm going to go with his yeah. movie over. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it's going to be. Yeah. And to me, the only reason I don't feel like a hater or anything saying this, I feel like I should be telling people because you can't prepare for the change. It's better for you to know so that you can yeah, prepare. Absolutely. Don't absolutely. get caught slipping. So it's going to be like TikTok. Remember how uh, everybody went on TikTok black and they, they blew up TikTok and then they gave the voiceovers to the white women who yeah. made more money. Yeah. And then the algorithm blocked yep. the black creatives. It's gonna yep. be this, it's gonna be literally it's gonna be it's gonna be real subtle. It's not gonna be nothing you can put your finger on. It's gonna be like, oh, all of a sudden my movie isn't on now now you know, the new the new releases. My my movie ain't there no more. Or yeah, high, like every every two B film I, I wrote was in the highest rated category when it dropped. Every single one of them. But I know in a minute my stuff's gonna be gone. It's gonna be Yeah, you know, whatever. So I just want everybody that, especially people that's working with it, to be ready to pivot, be ready to transition, be ready to move around. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want the train to stop. We Absolutely. don't even want to get in that kind of power. Absolutely. I, I think you made a good point because a lot of times that's something that, that bothers people when they have to pivot. They don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. So if you are working in 2B Films and you're trying to take that avenue, where should they go? Like, what should you pivot into? What do you think? I think they should start our networking is it's it's a difficult conversation to have with people hollywood works very different very different than the rest of any other part of the country it's almost like hollywood is almost not america you know what i mean it's like very the rules are very different and i think people are starting to see that now with people getting exposed for their mess and stuff it it just it doesn't like logic logically i should be able to it's not logical yeah in hollywood it, it's not, yeah. not logical so it's about them people and their money and what they're going to spend it on, on their networks and their stations. So if they say do it a certain kind of way to get your foot in the door, that's what you need to do. It shouldn't be open for discussion. Just freaking do it. And I feel like a lot of my Detroit friends are going to be resistant to that. Like, okay, okay, I get it. But if your movie is number one on Tubi right now, you can go to Atlanta and probably go somewhere and meet some people and you need to be doing that. You need to be you need to be expanding your network because you might not know the, the new plans of Tubi, but this person over here in Atlanta might. Because Atlanta's considered Black Hollywood Absolutely. right now. I don't care what Detroit Atlanta they call it Atlanta Black Hollywood. Or if you don't have a friend in LA, you need to you need to be at the film festival. Go to the Pan African Film Festival. They do it every summer. Meet people. Because what it's a relationship business. Everything yeah. I know, I know because somebody told me I or I, I overheard yeah. a conference call I'm learning. that I wasn't, you know, what I'm saying that I wasn't supposed to. They didn't know I was in the room and I was listening to the to the to the uh, people from Fox say it or whatever. So everything I know, I know because of my relationships and I, I, try, I, I have friends in Detroit. I tell them and I could just watch the faces glaze over like, OK, whatever, bitch, we get making money. My, you know, it's like, OK. I'm trying to I, tell you. I don't care that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'll tell you once. I can tell you twice. So. I agree. I agree. <laughs> That's a really good point. I, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if if Good Boy said no to when you said that if they tell you to do a certain way. I know he's very pro. Do your own thing. Stick to your own thing. What like? I want to ask like you if they ask you to do a certain way. You got to pivot. You got to do what they ask you to do. Like at what point? I, I don't want to say that you can't do your own thing, mm -hmm. but at some point you got to give in in order to get your foot in the door. Like, what this is my rule. I it. If it's not, if like, if I think God will forgive me for it, like, if I think it's, you know, <laughs> if my moral code will let me do it and it's not hurting nobody, uh -huh. I, it don't hurt me to learn how to do it. Because I look at it like a learning experience. I'm an introvert. I don't necessarily talk to a lot of people. Right. When I first moved out to LA, I had to learn how to get out of my comfort zone. I had to learn everything was you gotta you gotta be it here. It would be stuff like a party. And I'd be like, what what do I need to be at a party for? We're trying to work because it's this is where everybody making the deals at the party. Uh -huh. So I had to learn how to 
go to the party and not just go, but go and, and talk and start conversations and not stand against the wall. And you know what I'm saying? I had to, but at the end of the day, now I know how to do that. Right. So now it's like, those parties. I, I know how to, I know how to engage when I need to engage. I know how to be engaging when I need to be engaging. And that was a huge for me because I was so uncomfortable. The first year I was in LA, I was the most uncomfortable I've ever been in my life. I've never been so uncomfortable. And I had to learn how to work with others in their world. Cause I came to LA, they didn't come to me. They come to Detroit. Now y'all got to do it our way, but we go to them. We got to do it their way. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, movie business is a Hollywood byproduct. It's their thing. Okay. Yeah. It's always their thing. All roads lead back to Hollywood. They do. So you have to understand how they're playing the game. Cause as soon as they realized everybody was making all this money and they wasn't getting none of it, they're going to figure out how to get it. Absolutely. So now they're about, now they're about to bulldoze. So what, what you want to make a friend or you want to be mad? There you go. I mean, and then you got to start- want to go back back to working at the plant like what do y'all want to do but some people are some people are going to die on the hill and that's their choice and that's what you want to do Ooh, but that's a good one. you know i don't know what your end game means that's a, some people just want to get money they don't care about awards and all that's want money so you know. that's a good point you're gonna die the hill of your ego or you could have played along got learned the game to an extent the- i'm not saying go to the Okay, so because Cat Williams and Diddy and all this stuff got exposed, now people are now we're now our friends are asking us like you have been wanting the party? And it's like we know how to go to the party and we know how to leave the party. See the thing is you gotta know when to leave the party. Okay. <laughs> you don't be all up in there at one o'clock in the morning. Nope. You gotta leave the party. You go the parties always start, you know, the sun shine all day in California. Mm-hmm. So the party always start when it's light outside. You go when it's Light outside, you eat, you drink, you take your pictures, you get your Getty images and all that. And when it starts to get dark, you start wrapping it up. <laughs> it's like Cinderella. You got to be home before midnight. And you go to those parties and you learn how to play that game. So I'm not I'm not telling anybody to, to violate their moral code or to have anal sex with somebody they don't want to have sex with or do cocaine with somebody they don't want to do cocaine with. I do think you can get along um without i just think you have to know how to move absolutely and in detroit we move like hustlers absolutely we move we move aggressively and in in la they move subtly everything is subtle so coming in the door like yo what's up they ain't do that really? <laughs> Actually, you lower, your voice. <laughs> lower, your, lower your voice so I'm, when i say that i mean you just have to adapt and you have to be open to adapting without feeling like somebody's doing something to you. Ooh. And I understand that because that's how I felt like, this is me. This is who I am. Ooh. And now I'm like, no, chill. It's, no. I got to learn how to play, play this game. I like that. Because this is their game. This is their game. So we have to understand that part. I feel like once you can wrap your brain around the fact that you control so very little, um, you'll be able to do what you need to do. And I think, I think that's where, and that's the hill that people are going to die on. That ego of thinking that they control so much because they're so used to playing a game one way, and then you get into another ball field, and it's like, I, you ain't really got, you barely got a leg to stand on here. Like, you just need to come on in here, figure it out, do what you need to do. Obviously, not compromise your morals, but figure out the game, and then you want Unless you want to. Some people yeah. want to compromise yeah, their they, morals. You know they, they, if that's what you want to do. I know some girls that slept their way up. Maybe if that's what you want to do, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good boy asked a good question, though. I'm glad you said it. What's aggressive and what's passive and subtle? I'll give you a good example. Aggressively, coming from the hustle capital of the country, coming from a place where we flip everything like a kilo of drugs, okay? We treat everything like a kilo, okay? We flip houses. Everything is a flip with us. You know what I'm saying? We flip. No we, fl- we flipping movies right now. We flipping. Period. Uh, going in the room and being like, yo, my name is Heather. I'm from Detroit. I work hard. I get you. I got your scripts. I got your movie. That's aggressive. Mm-hmm. This is what they want you to do. Hey, everybody. Oh, my God. I love your scarf. You're just amazing. I love your last work. That's just great. Hey, maybe we should have coffee sometime. And two years later, go, so you're going to let me write these scripts or not? That's what they want. They want, they want to like you. 
They want to get to know you. They want to see how you move. They want to know what you're, what, what you're safe with. Like, can I bury a stripper in front of her? Like, can I kill, can I murder somebody? Or is it going <laughs> like, to be on TMZ tomorrow? Can I, so. I can't. Like, they want to get to know you. They have to like you. Nobody's doing business with you in Hollywood if they don't genuinely like you. Yeah. And in Detroit, we're like, get this money. I don't give a fuck. I don't like that nigga. Nope. So you have to be likable. And guess what? That's not, that's easier said than done. Some people are just magnetic and they walk in the room and some of us had to learn how to be yeah. likable. <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's just real. That is just real. Like, so, I mean, it ain't, no, it ain't no quick uphill. So I think Tubi got people recognition quickly. Yeah. And uh, transitioning to the Hollywood scene, you have to learn how to slow everything. Takes time. I agree with that. I want to ask you, you, you live, you are, are you still in LA? Because I know it's been 10 years since you've been there. Are you still there or have you moved mm -hmm. back yet? No, I was only in LA. Um, I moved to LA in 2018, 2019, officially. Um, so it's only been five years. Five years uh, okay. At this moment, I'm in Detroit. Yeah. I'll be back in LA next month. I'm home all the time because my mom is 80, you know, so I gotta, oh, well, I gotta come that home. Is, <laughs> that is a beautiful thing. That yeah, is, she looks good. She looks. I told her that. I think it look good. I love, I love that. I love it. So you you talked about getting to LA and and transitioning for that. Like, mm -hmm. how? At what point did you? Because I know that has to be. A, that's clearly a learning curve. At what point did it hit? Like, okay, all right, I got it. Like, I I think I got it now, and this is what I got to do. Like, it still okay. ain't hit. Like, I got it. <laughs> I I knew I had to. I knew I had to rethink my life. Uh, Ooh. one day leaving the comedy store. And when I first got to LA, I stayed at a friend's house in Inglewood and I used to have to catch the bus, um, two buses to get to the comedy store to try to stand in line to get three minutes of stage time. Hi. Um, that's how, that's, that's just what it is. That's just the game. And I had done comedy for many years. I knew comedians all over the country and I was just like, my, it, it isn't helping name dropping. None of it's helping. I've done this. I've done that. Nobody cared. And I realized I had to play their game. I had to learn their rules and do it their way. And I was walking down Sunset and I was just devastated. <laughs> devastated because I felt like I had to start over. And essentially, you kind of do. You just move faster because you already know how to do the job. But I pretty much, I mean, I was a veteran comic um, in Detroit, but I was new. I was a new comic and in LA and they treated me like I was new. And by the time I got home, it took me about an hour and a half to get home. By the time I got home, I made my peace with it. And I woke up the next day like, all right, this is what you got to do. Ooh. And then the pandemic came. Um, but during the pandemic, I rethought a lot of my strategies. It was easy for me to make friends in, in Clubhouse and um, <laughs> online where everybody was kind of stuck anyway. And I was like, yo, this is my, this is my bag. I could do this. And by the time the world opened back up, I had relationships, I had friends, and I um, <coughs> I, I came out and I was just like, okay, okay, and, and things started happening. But I, I definitely had to fall back for a second and say, okay, Heather, your way is not going to work. I'm the way that has literally always worked for me my whole life is not going to work. That is... That's crazy. I, I cried. I cried walking down so I, I said, I go hold you. Did. I cried. Well, by the time I got to my bus. <laughs> Cause you can't be crying on no bus <laughs> at midnight. <laughs> I'm still not from Detroit. Like, I ain't stupid. Like, <laughs> you look like lit. That's funny. I, I love that. You know, Heather, this is not completely unrelated, but I was thinking earlier, I'm glad you said that, that you cried and that you came to a peace with it because I was thinking, um, I was thinking earlier, I don't know what I was doing, but I was saying to myself that when you want to evolve and you get to a certain place, you you go through so many bursts and depths and stuff. You go through mm -hmm. the depths of the ego and you got a bunch of rebirths of just yourself and new mindsets and all these epiphanies that you're having just to get to where you got to go. And if you evolving and you growing right, you're going to go through so many depths and rebirths and things. And I think that is a very good point. There's, there's <laughs> such a, a depth of understanding like, okay, this ain't it. And there's a rebirth for no, but this was what I can do. And and you and you just continue to move on. If you're doing it right, you keep moving. But didn't I didn't have a choice because it was either that or come back home. Okay. And I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to come back home a failure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's, so I had to figure something out. I quarantined in LA. Um 
because my parents are older. So my mother was didn't want me bringing nothing home from the airport. So she wouldn't let me come home <laughs> for several months. She, would, she was like, you got to stay there. You can't come back. Yeah, and then it. once they got vaxxed, um, she said I could come home. <laughs> so that was what? seven months later like, <laughs> so i had no choice but to reinvent myself we all did we all reinvented our all, all, all the comics did you know we had to figure out what we was gonna do because we couldn't do nothing and um when i like i said when the world opened back up i got passed at the club i started getting more stage time and things just started opening up i hosted at the comedy store like things just started opening up I love or whatever it. so yeah but i had to i literally did have to like say heather you gotta let your way go Absolutely. I like this. So I want to talk about that. I want to go back and then we'll go forward. Can you tell, I think that any type of entrepreneur, any type of artist, the moment you get paid the first time for doing your artwork is a different type of feeling. It just puts you in a different mindset, even if you have to change along the way. Can you tell me about the first time you got paid for doing comedy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you about the first time I got paid. <laughs> Of uh, the bar isn't even there anymore. It's on Grand River and Evergreen. It used to be called the Blackberry, okay. and it was it was a death house, man. If they they probably shot eighty thousand people in that bar. <laughs> <laughs> they were airing it out, okay. But the 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 owner, he was you know he was that guy in the streets now, but he loved comedy. You know what I'm saying? So he he kept a comedy night at his bar, but it. his his cronies also hung out there. So listen. <laughs> it was a hood spot Maybe. and um a, a man i would love for my to the end of days popcorn he was uh he was the guy that had all the shows in detroit when i first started and so uh he would let us get up me uh mike larry josh adams i don't know if you follow ha ha davis but his yeah. his one of his main comedians homeboys is a good dude named barry and barry would be up there with us and clayton ct would be up there with us and we would just sit we were just new and young and we would just sit like can i go up and sometimes he say yes most of the time he say no and then I'll, he would let us get up two or three a night and then he let the real comedian that's how they'd be like not a real comedian is gonna come up or whatever and it was just chaos the bar was always just so much chaos it was just they were shooting dice one night in the middle of the show like it was just like <laughs> it, was just, it was just sheer chaos and then one day popcorn called me and said baby girl I'm a, um, go ahead and get a couple dollars. <laughs> I might have got forty dollars. I might have, but I had worked hard to get that book, okay. and it meant something to me. <laughs> it is. It is. I love that. And from there, I at least knew I was bankable, or whatever. So, and then I started doing my own shows at a certain point too. So, I was always I was a party promoter for a while. I was always in the streets. I know that sounds crazy, but I was I was definitely a, a street. A street chick, a, a B girl, as my mama used to say. <laughs> you one of them B girls, whatever. So I was always at parties, at bars and clubs and stuff. And I was young. You're supposed to be in the bar when you're in your in your twenties. That's what it's for. Yes. Or what? I know when to stop. I know when to sit down. Or whatever. I literally just sat down. But anyway, the pandemic sat what me down. I ain't gonna hold y'all up. The pandemic you literally down? just sat like, me no, down. She just sat out. She just she sat out. out. She just, she just sat <laughs> Now, now I gotta be an occasion. Now, I, now it's like, who all gonna be there? What's in it for me? Cause I, I don't need to meet guys. I got a boyfriend, so okay. Nah. Um, so if it's yeah, I mean these guys that's gonna give me some money. Like, what, what, what's the win in here? What's the win? Wow, and wow. so you know, I stay home most of the time. I'm lame. I'm so lame now. Love broke me. Sad. I don't even talk about no, it. Go no, ahead. I, keep going. I did not even believe you. I don't believe you. a lot of people don't believe me. I don't believe you. <laughs> uh -huh. A lot of people be like you, and I'm like, I know, right? No. I held it down for the single pimps. For I for the girl pimps, I held it down for us for a long time. <laughs> you said God, so good boy says gotta be for business or entertainment. Yeah, Let's talk. I yeah, agree. For sure. I got I definitely I'm not at a bar. I, I'm not at a bar. I can't I like, do. I mean, I, I, I don't like making drinks at home though. I like bar drinks better for some reason. I think yeah. it's psychological. I do like bar drinks better though. Clubs, I, I feel like I, I do. I think that I, I care more about the art. Now it's like I want to be somewhere where people are, where, where there are other creatives. That's mm -hmm. just like the most I want to be at. Unless I want family. Other than that, those are the only two places I want to be. Other yeah, it's a different time. vibe. We we have a lot of fun. I think people think comedians sit around and laugh all day and crack jokes all day. <laughs> and I could I have friends that I could be with them all day and we won't crack any jokes. Really? And then I have friends that literally all day long, like they're literally like a machine 
all that. So yeah, yeah, it is fun. It is fun, but it sometimes it's exhausting. It is. <laughs> I can't believe that. Actors are exhausting. Yes, they're exhausting. Um, they act. You know how you ever watch a movie and they it's an actor and they making fun of him and he's real like over the top, and you like and that's that's the joke. That's really how they act. They really do be like, oh my god, god my craft. So you're upsetting my chakras. Like they really do act like that. <laughs> they, really, they really are so extra. They really are. So there are times when the introvert in me is like, I can't today, oh God. I can't. I just okay. can't. Don't nobody talk to me. Just I'm gonna go on stage and I'm gonna go home. Like I'm gonna come that. on stage and be like, bye. <laughs> and like, I, I don't want to talk to y'all today like or whatever. That. But no, we have a, we have. Yeah, it is fun. I do value my creative friends, but sometimes you need people that remind you of who you are, where you came from. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you need the people that knew you, that call you by your baby name. Man. Peanut. Yeah. yeah, you need the people that. <laughs> I remember that one time, you like, don't. Don't come around here acting all the same. <laughs> you, right? <laughs> don't you let me change. Don't you do it. Man, you need yeah. them. Those people are so important. Like, there's. We always talk about being humble, and there's a different way to humble people, but you need them other people that keep you real humble. Like, don't forget, I remember you peed in the bed. It's like, can you not? Yep. Can you? Don't. Don't do that. No, yep. my cousins, they, they know my real age and stuff. I'm just be like, oh, whenever I see them, hey, Shannon, I love you. But I'll be like, Shannon, don't, don't, we ain't got, don't put no hard numbers up on the screen. <laughs> just don't, we ain't got to do that. We ain't ever got to do that. You ever, ain't, ever, ever. These are good boys. To, he wants that connection for sure. He said, you can tell the fake love from the real love. I agree. What are we talking I about? Agree. Romantic love or the love in the streets? I think love in the streets. I think when, oh, I think that. <laughs> you might be on the Oh, that love is fake. That's that's the most seasonal, temperamental, uh, Ooh. the rain come, they gone love. Street love is the worst love. That. If, you get you know, you, if you get you one friend out of the streets, you are so fortunate. Absolutely. You be at the club for 10 years. If you get you one friend, <laughs> that one right. real friend, fortunate. You everybody else will be gone. Have you Come and go. What is that like? Heather, what was that like as you rise? People see you grow. Like everybody talks about everybody can't go, but nobody really knows the process of shedding that skin from those people. Like what? what is I that? Never, I don't appreciate it. Like I don't see it the way everybody else does. Other people tell me, oh my God, Heather. And I'm like, like what? I, no, I'm still not where I'm trying to get to. I'm really focused. I was just tell I just said this yesterday. Um, my boyfriend tells me a lot. Like he'll just be like, Oh my God, that's amazing. I'm like, it is? Oh, okay. <laughs> because I'm I'm looking at like a lot of my class is doing way better than me. So I'm just looking like, like okay, well, how I'm gonna feel good about myself and I'm friends with C P. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, do y'all see what he doing? So that's kind of how I see myself. But when other people mention it, I'm grateful. And I do take that minute to be like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You doing okay. You know, yeah. be easy on yourself. Absolutely. Don't be so hard on yourself. But it's a very competitive business we're in. So it's just, so no, I don't, I don't feel like, oh, I'm shedding my skin <laughs> or whatever. But I'll tell you what I do feel. Um, I, I do theater shows now and I went into a, like a bar night and I was just like, oh, I don't do this no more. It was like, mm -mm. and it's not that I don't do it because I do, but it was like, a, oh, wow, it's been a long, long time since yeah. I did this. Yeah. So that in that moment, I couldn't help but say, wow, you have come a long That's way because it used to be a time when you was happy that popcorn gave you $40 hey. with a bar show. Now you over here like bar show, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. But Detroit is a good town. Uh, Detroit makes us good comedians, but because Detroit demands our best, yeah. so I can I can Absolutely. I can take some new jokes to a bar in Detroit and figure out if I can take them to a national yeah. stage. Because Detroit gonna let me know. Yep. Well, I don't like that. So I was like, oh, y'all don't like that. All right. Like that. <laughs> Before I go embarrass myself. Okay. What? Let's talk about embarrassing yourself. How do you handle when you bond? <laughs> <laughs> how do you handle when you bomb that's hilarious um baby i don't know <laughs> <laughs> ain't no right answer for that ain't no right answer for that i don't know i don't know i have friends that bomb and let's say we all ride to the show together my home girl my very good friend melanie Hire. she's a comedian in detroit she's doing her thing she'd be on wdiv channel four in the morning and stuff melanie is very 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 competitive 
and she's competing mostly within her own self. If the show don't go the way she wants to go, when I tell you the car be so quiet on the way back, I'll be like, so we can't talk no more. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> we doing talking for the rest of the night. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like some people can shake it off. Some people don't shake it off. Uh, me personally, I'm not going to really feel good until I can redeem myself. So if it's not the best set, I'm going to be out the next night looking for a stage. Like, all right, I need to get up because I got to I gotta fix that. Yeah. <laughs> Because what if I die tomorrow? I can't die tomorrow, but that'd be my last set. You know what I'm saying? No, I can't. I can't let that happen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so, oh, no, yeah, I have to immediately find another mic. That is that's, that's me. That's my <laughs> thing. But I know some people that get mad. I know people that be ready to fight. I know people that's like, come on, shut, get my money. Like, they yelling and stuff. <laughs> now you want to get paid because you, you have, nah, And then I know some people, and out of all of those, you know who the worst person is? The worst person is the person that bombed and didn't even realize he bombed. He's like, oh, yeah, that was great. Like, bro. Uh, <laughs> were you there? Were you there? Because we can't let you think that that's acceptable. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. That's the one that scares me the most. Like the guy that's like, I killed it. Like nobody died. What you, no, no, you didn't kill nothing. That was awful. You walked half the room. Oh. Oh um, and I think it's more of them than it is everybody else. If you get mad, that means you coming back. You a fighter. You about to go back to the lab and work it out. You got to come back swinging. But the person that thinks they did okay, oh no. I'm Chris Mosley said that delusional bombers are the worst. They got. They have to be. I am really. I am really concerned that people don't know that they be bombing because mm -mm. I've been the show and been like, this ain't it, baby. I if I feel like how you didn't feel me, you tell the joke. Like you ain't here to empty, like everybody was laughing. And then when you came up, they stopped. And then when you got off, they started again. You ain't feel that. You ain't feel how the room got quiet and you got loud again. You can't feel like, come on, I know you. I felt it. I know you felt that's crazy. Hey, Chris. <laughs> I didn't know that he, he, that's my boyfriend. He's a comedian from St. Uh, Louis via Phoenix. Um, so yeah, he he yeah he understands the life very well. DJ Good Boy said, "I remember seeing my friend face after a bad set one time." Long. It be it, sometimes they be chopped and screwed. Sometimes, baby. <laughs> and sometimes because comedians are terrible people. Sometimes that's when it's funny for me. <laughs> like look at his face because ah! we're terrible. Yeah. People. It's like don't get mad because if you get mad, but it's rules too. It's rules. It's like don't don't. If you comedians are so superstitious, we're like Ooh, right. So if you walk in talking about I'm about to kill it, everybody gonna walk away from you. Like get that juju it's, off. Of, don't be I'm about to kill it. You about to jinx everybody. Don't be with <laughs> there. And if you bomb, nobody wants to talk to you if they're about to go up. So if you bomb and I'm about to go up next, mm -hmm. don't touch me. Okay. Don't talk to me because you. About to pass me that. <laughs> Get away, whatever you got. You're about to pass it to me. So no, no, no. I'll talk to you after the show. I like that. I Stay like over that. there. You, you, you're dirty. I like that. You're I'm funny uh, vibes. Hey, Dave Cheney. I see that everybody's in here. <laughs> I want to talk about. Um, I don't hear much, and I think that maybe I don't know why. I hear a lot of rap. I hear always hear rappers talk about. Facebook rappers or rappers on Instagram and Facebook. What do you feel about the comedians that are coming up through social media? Like, do you feel that they're booming in popularity so fast that they they're not building? <laughs> you're trying to give me you're trying to give me a trouble. I'm not. <laughs> I want to know. Um, know. Do you think that that because um, is it making them pop? Popcorn, not popcorn comedians. Is it making the popcorn famous that they don't have the tenacity or the resilience to go long term? Or and and, and what is that? What do you think that does to the, the industry or the art overall? It's definitely changed the game. Definitely changed the game. Um, I I think there's something to be said for people that can create a scene and shoot it, um, and make us laugh. I definitely think that there's a real talent there. So I would never say a social medium is not talented because I've, I've seen them pull something out of nothing. Yeah. And make it viral. So it's dope to see and for those that can do it. Um, I, unfortunately, I, I think it has made comedy look much easier than what it is. So I feel like everybody thinks they can do comedy now. I feel like everybody thinks they know comedy now because in their mind, well, if Jess Hilarious can sit in her car and talk, why can't I? Because she had something that everybody doesn't have 
there's still a talent to a B. Simone and a Jess Hilarious. There's still a talent to a Mojo who literally makes us laugh at the most regular, like if he pitched it to you, you wouldn't laugh. So my baby mama gonna come over and we're gonna argue. That's not funny. But when he does it, you're like, oh my God. Yeah. How did he do that? Same right. with Country Wayne. Country Wayne takes the most basic daily things and just makes them hilarious or whatever. Um, it could be something as funny as you talk, the way you talk and the way you put your sentences together is funny. But if, if I said it, it wouldn't be funny. But when you say it, it's hilarious or whatever. So I definitely would never want to disrespect their talent or their creativity. But from the stand up comedy business, it has diluted our game a lot it has made it more difficult for us um because a lot of times a promoter will rather book the person with all the followers because they can get their you know they can make money yeah. but that person without a followers may not be able to actually do the job that the people are paying them to do so they're doing the job facebook pays them to do on instagram but they're not doing the job that mark really's comedy castle is paying them to do which is make a room full of a live audience like they not so they they have watered it down a lot for us so you have some comedians that are very like i can't stand them and then you have some that are trying to well let me jump in put me in coach and then you have most of us are like me like i respect what they do but i need as long i need them to respect what we do too because it's like they need us too absolutely i think i i and i i didn't i didn't realize i'm stuttering i didn't realize i asked that question when i had already kind of realized that in the back of my mind because i attended a comedy show mm -hmm. but unbelievable also made a very good point they think it translates to stage and sometimes it's not one -on one it's never one -on -one. never never i saw a comedy show and um i'm not even gonna say i went to a comedy show recently and i saw uh comedians that do skits mostly i've never really seen them do stand up i saw some i know who does kind of stand up a little mm -hmm. bit and who does this and i saw somebody that does skits and they got on stage and i was like oh my god and, and mm -hmm. i mean I don't do it often comedy is not my thing <clears throat> i don't do it often so i don't know the ins and outs but that was the first time i actually saw that well i kind of knew but i saw it in person you doing a skit does not make you funny on stage and i said oh my god and it was such a big difference and then you saw someone that was clearly a stand-up comedian come after or before however it went and you saw how they interacted with the crowd how it just was so smooth and i was like oh my god i didn't realize that it does not oh wait is she still there yeah Are i had to um I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. had to, my, my bad, I had to put it on low battery because I didn't want it to start tripping. Okay. Yeah, I heard um, every word you said. I heard you. <laughs> uh, skits didn't translate to on stage, and I was like, wow. This it, is very interesting. It takes a long time. I've seen all y'all favorite social medians bomb. I've seen them all bomb. I've seen them all bomb horrifically. Oh my God. But it don't matter because because then Facebook sends them a check for fifty thousand dollars, so we're not gonna gloat, comedians. We're not gonna gloat, but yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I've been in the back of the room and all the comedians like told y'all that nigga wasn't funny. Oh, yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been there. I've been there in Detroit. I've been there in L.A. I've been there in New York. I've seen it or whatever more times than I. I needed to see it. I, I don't need to see it. Sometimes when they come in, I'll be like, just don't, cause like, just get your money yeah. and just l let us have this, cause you we got it's gonna take you three four years to get good at this. Because it takes a long time to learn how to, when you hear comedians say the craft, what we're saying is we're learning the art of laughter. We're learning the way people receive our material. We're learning how to present it. Um, sometimes you write a joke, you might have to do it a hundred times before it's, it's good. I love that. We love did it on an open mic, unknown. Like when I was working out my set, finding my voice, learning how to write jokes, I wasn't embarrassing myself in front of nobody. I wasn't learning at an A-list at the top of the food chain. So you guys are coming into a room full of people that expect you to be hilarious. Not kind yeah. of funny, not chuckles, hilarious. Right. And you don't even know how to write a joke. You don't even know how to write a joke, which is something somebody has to teach you how to do. At some point, we all learn how to write a, the mechanics of stand-up comedy. Yeah. So, but people think because it's, silly and we're in bars and we're all we're doing is getting drunk and, and talking out no we we know what we're gonna say hours before we go on stage days before we go on stage so if you're pulling it out your ass you're gonna bomb i love that i, I love that um i feel like we're so many things are being exposed and 
like we're talking about Diddy doing it. We're gonna talk about that too. We're gonna get to some other things. But I love getting back to the actual art and the core things because social media has made everything such popcorn so quick, so fast. Mm -hmm. You think you got it, you get here, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. And and I love getting back to the core of what it is, what makes what makes a legend what a legend is. Like and and it, it ain't what you see it right now. I can guarantee it ain't what you see it right now. And I love, I love that. I love it. Time Let's and influence. Yeah, absolutely. Time absolutely. and influence. Not, not one or the other. <laughs> legend is time. So when y'all say somebody has been doing something for a year or two as a legend, I'm like, why are you lying? We won't remember them in five years. They stop right now, we won't remember. You know who we remember? Hercules. The story of Hercules is 500 years old. We still talk about it. Why? Because it's legendary. You know what I'm saying? That's a legend. A legend is not, oh, dog, you a legend in the making. No, you're not. <laughs> not a couple of jokes. Let's have this conversation in 100 years. <laughs> I agree. I, I want to talk about I feel like they throw it around too much. I, I feel like legend and icon get thrown around way too much. And go. Mm. And go. I'm so sorry. I to go. Um, men and the men are obsessed with goat conversation. They every they all they want to do is talk about the goat. I don't care what the side. We be talking about a mechanic. He the goat mechanic. Like they, all they want to do is rank everybody. As soon as I hear something about a goat, I just go. Let me just mm. leave because I know it's about to be. Because I'm not gonna I agree with anybody you guys say anyway. So, <laughs> I'm gonna, so I did want to ask because um, we definitely want to get you. You've written it all. I wanted to talk about. I'm sorry, you guys. Excuse me. I'm a single parent, and my kid is in the back banging on the door, and I'm a bang. Never mind. Let me because I know. Oh, I don't hit the babies on the live. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Hey, Tamir. Hey, Kristen. I can say hi to everybody that came in while she's uh not beating her child, because of course she's not. Hey, Wesley. Okay, one second. Okay, so sorry, you guys. I only see you so far. I'm sorry. If you came in, I didn't say hi. I love you. <laughs> just admitted, just admitted to it too. I don't be my kid, y'all. I didn't no, no, definitely not on the live. You got to mute. You got to, <laughs> you got to make it go dark. You got to do everything before you start swinging on the babies now. <laughs> I don't believe you put your hands on kids. I just that's not. We don't get into all that. Okay, so I wanna. You don't need a kidney one day. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I will get old. I not want to be in a home somewhere because I'm trying to tell y'all. I might put my mama in one. She make me mad again. She going. She got my birthday. She might go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I got one more question I want to talk to you about. And then we're going to have a trending topic because I want to talk about that. Okay. Um, but you've written stand up. You do stand up. You've written um, films. What's the difference? Like, what is the big <laughs> page count? <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> what is the, like, yeah, what's Plot? The <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so, so a good set uh, has a beginning, a middle, and an end, like a movie. It has a theme, like a movie. Um, a voice, like a movie. A tone, like a movie. But... Uh, not as many characters unless you're Carrot Top or, you know, somebody that does characters. <laughs> but for the most part, not as many characters. And you don't necessarily need the rising action. You don't need the climax. Yeah. Um, I feel like stand-up is, is, is much more personal. Your story could be completely fiction. I wrote a story about drug dealers. I've never sold drugs. You know what I mean? So I, I wouldn't write jokes about that, though, because that's not personal to me. Um, I think it's probably more so anything the voice the, the part of your brain you're tapping into imagination versus reality so your script is imagination your comedy set is is your reality even if it is a fictionalized version or you're you know changing some of the finer details to make it funnier or whatever I have a joke about my son um, embarrassing me at the movie theater one time and in my joke, I say we went to go see one movie, but actually went to go see another movie. But I changed the movie because the movie I changed it to made the joke funnier. You know what I mean? But it still was a joke about my frustration uh, with my kid in, <laughs> in that moment. And um, yeah, so I just think I think that's probably the biggest. And again, length. Oh, yeah. I can I can have a career in comedy with 15 minutes. I can't write no 15 minute movie yeah. in my career. Yeah. I got to write features. Yeah. <laughs> I think that. Okay, I love 
love it. The question. That was a really good question. Thank you. Oh, that's like my favorite. That's my favorite compliment doing this. That's like the best compliment. <laughs> no, that's a good question. Like Sometimes we do these and it just be like, what are we talking about? I'm like, oh, thank you. I can go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're asking really good questions. Oh, thank you. So what, what, what trending topic do you want to talk about? Like, I don't know what trending topic you want to talk about. What do you think I want to talk about? Do you want to talk about Shine Puff Daddy Cone? <laughs> Let's talk about, about the diddler, y'all. Do you want to talk about Diddy or Cat Williams? Because all the comedians got to answer Cat Williams' questions. I refuse. <laughs> that is I know too many of these people in real life. Y'all ain't getting me in trouble. Okay. Well, okay, let's see. I don't know, Diddy. Okay. <laughs> but I did, I did try to run away from home when I was 16 to go find him. Oh, my God. How far did you get? Like, how did that go? Uh, the end of the street. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened was I was trying to I was trying to uh, trick my mama into letting me take this bus trip. Okay. And then once I got there, my plan was to go find um, Uptown Andre Harrell okay. and Diddy. Uh, that's back when they was first starting to pop a little bit. Okay. And in my mind, they was going to sign me. And that was my plan. Um, but mm -hmm. then my mother figured out my plan and wouldn't let me go on the trip. Wow. My plan was to jump off the bus and just not get back on the bus to that's come back. <laughs> that's correct. I was like, I, I've, had, I, I've learned all I can learn here. Uh, thank you, mom and dad, for teaching. <laughs> We're done. I'm ready to go. I'll uh, pursue my my dream, and I'm just gonna go uh, live on the streets of New York. And you know, all the TV shows made New York look like the Thanks dopest place on earth in the '90s. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah, let's go, or whatever. And I was thinking, yeah, I was like, I'll find Teddy Riley. I'll find Diddy. I'll find somebody <laughs> that's popping. You know what I'm saying? And they'll, they'll sign me. They'll sign me. And that was a, uh, that was, yeah. So that's my, my closest relationship to Diddy is the fact that I did literally go looking for him. And I did, I was in Harlem about a year later, literally asking people like, where is bad boy? And I really thought somebody was going to be like, right there. Yeah, right there, right there. <laughs> I thought somebody was going to be like, oh yeah, up there. Oh yeah. You know, the uptown, up the street, bad boy right there. The Wu-Tang, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but. Yeah, I thought I could just ask. That's what I mean when I, I say Detroit aggression. That was the really? aggression. Like, I'm just going to walk in. Yeah, they're going they to like me. Exactly. They're going to like me. You're going to tell me you're going to help me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That is part of the Detroit delusion we got because we really do. I believe But that. I was I told um, it, well, it is rumors and things they tell you when you first move to L.A. People tell you who to stay away from. People tell you who to be careful around. People tell you who uh who to get you know which of these dudes is on that kind of tricking uh you know you could you could throw it he'll pay for it you know I mean, you get broke enough you get rent bad enough um and from out the gate pretty much it was like diddy parties wow girl so it's kind of like a all right now watch yourself yeah that was out the gate so nothing that has happened has surprised me because i was kind of pre-warned about him specifically I did go to some cool parties though, where everything was kind of normal. So I don't, I don't want to. I don't think it's fair to put it on everybody's party. Yeah, I think he had a very specific reputation. Absolutely, I, mm -hmm. I agree. I think is everybody ain't saying the same thing for no reason for this long. Like it just can't be this. Everybody ain't lying for this long. Cause I know I was hearing about this. I ain't, I ain't that old, but I've been hearing about this for decades at mm -hmm. this point. So everybody, everybody saying this. So there's some true. Wherever there's a little smoke, there's a little fire. I just, I just wonder what we're going to do different moving forward. I mean, people, sin is in the world. People, bad people in the world. The only time we seem to have a problem is when they're famous. If this was your next door neighbor, nobody would have a problem knowing what to do. So my thing is, what are we, are we going to keep uh, idolizing these people we don't know because they have money? Or are we going to consider moving forward, hey, just because a guy has money doesn't mean he's a good person. And how about I I just kind of temper my fanboy or my fangirl and just listen to the song, you know what I mean, <laughs> and leave it at that. There that you was go. a brilliant art. George Benson is a brilliant artist. Nobody's about, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like our parents had a better control over this. Yeah. I don't know. I feel yeah. like we kind of get, when we start talking about famous people, we get real. Very, yeah. And that's on us. That's not, that has nothing to do with that. Yeah. That's 100% on us. How many people got to go on? Shay Shay and say the same person did them dirty and then you got to say okay I like your jokes I like your movies but if you dirty you dirty exactly. you know I, mean? <laughs> like, I agree I agree
I, I love Clay Shay, Club Shay Shay, by the way. Like, that's, a, that's a booming podcast. I know what you mean. I'm glad he was able to pivot and, and make something of his own that nobody really can take away from him. I love that. I really do. I saw well, this, and then we're going we're gonna to give a shout out to our sponsors, and then we're going to wrap up tonight's show. Hey, sponsors! <laughs> That's not what you meant. That's not what you meant. <laughs> you probably had a way you would let me let you do your thing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just silly right now. Um, I just got a sugar um, rush. I want to give. I want. I always got to ask this. What would you say? Um. Oh, right, I got two things. Okay. What piece of advice would you give to an upcoming comedian? Like, what do you have somebody that's like you know what? I want to learn. Um. <laughs> um. In Detroit, I would say do the work because we've proven that doing the work gets us. Uh, notice when we leave the city because we, we we outwork a lot of comedians from a lot of other communities i think chicago does a really good job of doing that too they outwork um it is a real job you have to treat it like a real job so you have to learn your craft and learn your responsibility to the audience and honor your relationship with the audience the same way that doctors and lawyers have to study and it takes years and you don't hear a doctor saying i'm a doctor on the first day of med school no you're not you're a student yeah. And it's the same thing. You have to be prepared to take the time to learn the job. Because once you learn the job, you can do the job. This job is taking me all over the world. Okay. So you can have access to that. If you rush it, you're going to limit because now you're going to be disappointing people. And sometimes you only get one bite. No new comic wants to hear what I just said. No, no. They're all watching like she's a hater. It's going to be different for me. It just is what it is. If you're a new comic in LA, I'm going to tell you that you're not going to be able to get enough stage time to be good. So you need to find somewhere to go that you can get stage time. The stage time is very, very hard to get in LA because it's too many famous comedians there. So it's hard to get up and get five minutes when Marlon Wayans just walked in the room. He about to do 25. So, um, and that happens every day in Hollywood. So you need to find somewhere you can work out your craft. Beauticians, get a thousand hours before they get licensed barbers get a thousand hours comics need a thousand hours so until you if you can't get up but once a month how long is it going to take you to get good so you need to be able to even if you drive down to san diego or if you go to another part of the of the state you need somewhere you can get up regularly and you can work out your craft i love that and that's my advice and i tell you nobody wants to hear it so i'm glad you asked because they won't i like <laughs> I like, and so the, they don't want to hear anything that doesn't feed the idea they have in their head yeah. of what it is. So when we work hard, we work harder than James Brown. <laughs> we work. It might not look like we are because we laughing and we drunk, but we work. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just because I'm drunk, don't mean I'm not working. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, what would you say to young Heather? What would you at this point right now? What would you say to young Heather? <laughs> it's the face. It's the thing. Keep all the babies. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Keep all the babies. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, that was terrible. I should have said that was awful. Um, forgive me, guys. I'm so okay. Whatever. Um, give, give yourself some grace. Uh, take a little more pride in yourself. Um. Forgive your mother. <laughs> That's a good one. That's the one. That's, That's the one right there. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's about it. I love that. I love that. Forgive your mother. <laughs> it's a complicated relationship. Very complicated it is. relationship. It is. It, it really is. I I love that was that was the the little that touched me. That's gonna bit. be the new. Shirt. We're gonna drop a shirt to say forgive your mother. I don't know who need to hear forgive your mother. <laughs> she did her best. I like that. I like that. I like that. And I'm gonna like that shirt. Um, yeah, I can sell that. Yeah, I want one. Let me know when you when you get those going. I want one. Uh so we gotta definitely get into our sponsors. I wanna send a huge, huge thank you. I don't have anything right here to tell y'all who they is, but I wanna send a huge thank I you. I want that money back. <laughs> 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 you guys, they are some 
amazing amazing popcorn carlos gourmet popcorn make sure you guys check them out on instagram give them a follow i'm a fan of the cheese popcorn i like caramel popcorn but it's a little crunchy on my teeth my teeth don't do well with those but they are amazing mm. popcorn. they are family owned they are very much local and they do offer local delivery so make sure you check out carter's gourmet popcorn you guys right on instagram and deliver you can get yours delivered this sometime this weekend probably throughout the week but check them out they are really good and if you actually have any party favors that you need for an event weddings conferences make sure you check them out they do those big events as well and they do them very well or if you check their page you might find a local pop-up shop that they'll be featured at i don't know you gotta go check them out but i would definitely say go get you some good popcorn some good black owned local popcorn okay um and so i'm i'm, I'm gonna close it out but Heather, I want to tell you thank you so much for tonight's episode. I have truly enjoyed you. I can't wait to chop the edit this episode because I know I'm gonna be laughing at you. Um, uh, so thank you so much for coming. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't do stuff like this a lot, but I need to do more of it. So thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course. So we gotta go out the same way we came in. I want to let you go, then I'll close it out. You gotta give the people something that you're grateful for, and you gotta tell them where they can find you to support you. Okay, I'm sick with my friends listen my friends pulled up to this live i'm so grateful for my friends for knowing they support me and that when they see me on live they click the link and come in thank you so much to all my friends and my cousin shannon <laughs> and <laughs> who's also my friend she's one of my first friends um in the chat guys thanks so much for um hanging out appreciate you absolutely and where, where can everybody find you i feel like there's a couple I don't know um I, my name should be be somewhere on this link uh heather J A Y H. if you are not already following me and you can just always google heather J A Y, my name and um i'll come up I'll always come up there's not a lot of black heathers yeah i'll come up she will she will absolutely come up. i go with her yeah. and she's the only one It'll be, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, same picture of me. It'll be a picture of me at the comedy store. <laughs> I already know what pictures come up. <laughs> the comedy store. It'll be like one where I'm like, oh, it was. Like, it's like this weird like, oh. <laughs> like, I don't know who took so that picture. Who took that picture? That none of the AI, none of my new AI finance pictures come up yet. So we got to flood my timeline with my brand new AI face. <laughs> I can't make you guys. I would like to say that I again. I think I'm just grateful for another day to get to try it again, to get it wrong, and to try to get it right. So I'm always. Mm -hmm. grateful. I'm also grateful for this episode because I knew I was gonna laugh. I don't know how hard I was gonna laugh, and mm -hmm. I am so excited to have you on, Heather. I was I was working really hard to find that comment. I was like, this lady says she got she got the special. <laughs> I was working so hard to find y'all her comment, y'all. Y'all do not. I appreciate you even looking and finding me and liking me and yeah. inviting me. Like that was nice. I, that was nice. That was a nice message to hear from you. So I appreciate oh, that. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. And I want to thank all of our beautiful audience members for joining me tonight and for coming to check out Heather. You guys, y'all know she's funny. So make sure y'all go follow and support her. Uh, make sure you give me a follow too while you're here. I got more episodes coming. All right. Um, but thank you guys. I love you guys. And I will be back next Tuesday. My name is Sherelle, the host. My I can't even say it right. My name is Sherelle, y'all. I'm the host of Let's Talk the Show in this and a podcast. I will see y'all next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Peace.